Let us begin. The large seaside town of Sea Spray is known for its fresh fish and skilled sailors, but above all, its charming coastline and passion for the sea, providing an idyllic holiday haven to the industrious workers of the capital city, Crucible. But for you, Sea Spray, forgot to change that one, is home, potentially. Maybe not for your character. You grew up playing on the docks, getting lost in the nearby woods, and hearing the fantastical stories of travellers from faraway lands. Tales of terrifying dragons and virtuous knights. Such adventure always seemed so distant. Until today! Word has begun to spread around Sea Spray that there's a problem down at the Ma Fishery, named after the Baroness Saltina Ma of Sea Spray. Some are saying that some sort of beast is lurking in the basement, feeding on the stores of salted fish. Folks are worried that whatever is eating the fish might get hungry enough to eat the fishes next. You've received a, you've each received a letter from Tamily Tandervale, the owner of the fishery. Inside is a desperate plea for help. With the town guard busy escorting the absent Baroness back and forth from Crucible, she <laughs> needs a few brave souls to venture down into the basement of her warehouse and put an end to the beast that's feasting on her fish. Do you have the courage to face the trouble under sea spray? So, yeah. it. <laughs> we've each got our characters. Um, we can kind of go around briefly. We've kind of heard of each of them in the character creation process, but starting with Armitage, a brief description of Armitage, Kieran. Armitage is a hefty orc who... Um... He used to be a sort of peddler, but wasn't very good at it. Um, he he sort of helps out at the bakery, or maybe the fishery sometimes. Um, <laughs> uh, he somehow acquired some uh, level of arcane skill. He's not really sure how, he just kind of did. Uh, he's not the brightest bulb in the box, but he wants to help. And... Uh, well, I guess you'll find out the rest. <laughs> He's not very deep. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, Penelope Patterson, brief description, please. Penelope is a um, quite a colourful character. Um, from a young age, the thrill of investigation and uncovering mysteries and secrets has been her passion. And... Um, her passion led her to find on one um, particular investigation a unique crystal formation which she began just to speak into to record her adventures as it were to herself as a small child but um, to her surprise that um, she started to get voices back coming from this crystal and started to realize that she was amassing uh, a small audience um, of listeners somehow this crystal um connecting with others across the realm and since then she's documented her adventures um she grew up in kells haven um and now she makes her way to sea spray to um to uncover new mysteries and um she's sort of getting her bearings and um with a letter received from name inserted that Natalie <laughs> can't remember um she um Tamalee Tanderville she um she's eager to find out what's lurking beneath the fishery thank you very much perfect <clears throat> Cesare a brief description doesn't have to be a Cesare. backstory if you don't want. no not won't be Cesare she's just a little herbalist working in sea spray um occasionally has a little bit of a primal outburst but people know she has magical abilities and is really good at healing so people tend to go to her occasionally for some heals um but they've asked her to come and help out because they know she's got some abilities there we go thank you very much and <laughs> i dread to ask murgatroyd barrowford a brief description please why do you dread to ask? <laughs> I don't know, the token's giving me evils. Yeah, so she should. Um, Murgatroyd is a local sort of wise woman slash healer. Um, you would quite often find her 
tinkering her out in her kitchen, making different distillations of herbs and things. But this led the people of her town to believe she is a witch. And so she's kind of been driven out. So she's um, sort of wandering from place to place currently, looking for somewhere to uh, settle and call home. And then she gets this um, this letter that uh, puts her onto the trail of something new. But um, you'd see her usually dressed in kind of like greys and browns and blacks and dark blues, etc., with a very distinctive flash of orange darting in and out between her feet, uh, which is bad to see her little familiar. You see, who is a little fox? Thank you very much. Perfect. So the letter has called for you to help on a certain day, Tamily. Tandervale has gathered you round. The the strong smell of salted fish and a fresh catch brought in um, alongside the the worried looks of the, the fishermen and sailors outside the Mar fishery um, strikes you as you enter into this large establishment, the beating heart of Sea Spray itself, providing food, wealth, um, jobs, industry, and interest for the local people here. Behind um, the the kind of front desk, you see the face, the broad, um, smiling features of Tamily Tandervale, who welcomes um, you in, immediately recognizing many of you um, and clocking that you are, you are responding to the letter. Um, she doesn't address anyone in particular, but just says, "Oh, I'm so glad that you all you're all here. Um, I'm in dire need of help." Uh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ted's just like, "We got a letter. We like, come down, yeah." Perfect, perfect. <laughs> uh, I'd hoped for some local. Um, ruffians maybe or or ne'er-do-wells just people looking for some some coin but uh to to have the likes of the the local um herbalist and and wise woman and um oh, oh no wizard actually and of course uh, wizard um alongside um i don't really uh, recognize you madam as she looks at penelope um, Penelope, as she's talking, has been like talking into the crystal herself, and she's like, across <laughs> from me sits a small woman with um, an elderly appearance and um, red hair as bright as an autumn morning. And uh, she, she sort of, and then as she's addressed, she kind of looks up and she's like, oh yes, um, uh, I couldn't turn down a, a such an exciting prospect as. Um, investigating the mystery below the fishery well um I i'm very glad you think so um all right in it fish down here well uh armitage th there's been a bit of a problem with exactly that you see there should be a lot more fish down there but they keep disappearing um something has broken into my my basement you'll you'll see when you get down there there's a big hole in the wall um, but I'm just a, a simple, well, I'm quite proud of the, the, the mark I've made here at the fishery, but I have no, uh, I'd be eaten alive by whatever it is down there that made that hole and stole all the fish. So I, I can only offer you each 10, uh, 10 gold pieces, um, perhaps more if you can give me s guarantee that, um, whatever creature has, has done this is dealt with um but a 10 gold guarantee a tandavale guarantee for sure um and perhaps a, a bit of mystery for you madam and a bit of um intrigue for everyone it does sound intriguing as he, as he smiles at her kind of happy, <laughs> like, goes into her crystal and she says the balding creature next to me um his wit is clearly not quite as large as his muscles. Well, I'm not bald. <laughs> <laughs> Correct, oh God, love... Almost baldy. I love this right. character already. <laughs> um, she she sees you talking to her. It's like, well, it seems you're bonding already. But um, please, 
come come with me. Um, there's no reason to to waste your time. Um, she gestures for you to follow, and she leads you round to one of the back rooms in the fishery, passing working um, folk on your way. And in front of you, you see um, currently closed with a a, pad, a heavy padlock on the top of it, as Tamily bends down with a takes a large key out of her um, pocket and opens the lock with a heavy sound. It it falls to the floor, and with a heave from her small um, halfling form. She pushes the trapdoor up and it creaks, and you see inside a set of wooden stairs descending into darkness beneath. She says, um, well, uh, this is it. Um, I wish you all the best. You, you've always got um, us up here to come back to. Um, things turn too sour. Well, um, thank you for having us in your lovely establishment, and um, I'm sure we'll put whatever mystery lies beneath to rest in but a moment's notice. One down here, right? <laughs> yes, Armitage, yeah. just down there. Um, thank you all. The woman's look of confidence was not particularly compelling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you descend the stairs? <laughs> yes. Send the stairs. Yeah, I think as Armitage and Penelope, who I imagine kind of leading the way, descend, um, Tamily takes a moment just to exchange a very quick word with both Cesare and Murgatroyd to say, please keep an eye on them. They're very, um, they seem quite headstrong. <laughs> I'll keep an eye on from, from behind. Yes, very well. <laughs> always had a, a good judge of character, Cesare. Uh, well, good luck! And she kind of waves to everyone as you head down. So... We'll, we'll, we'll get rid of this thing for you. Um, the stairs leading into the basement yeah. of the Mar Fishery creak with age as you make your way downstairs to find the beast that has been eating all the fish. In the centre of the room... In fact, I will move you over now. I've already placed you out on the stairs. Hopefully... Everyone's got vision on their token. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, oh, fuck it, you can yep. see everything. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, mine's fine. Oh, how weird. No. I had this problem in the other campaign as okay. well with the camera. Hmm. You tried Not too sure how to yeah. solve that. Yeah, if you try dragging out your token again, I'll delete you. Oh, there we go. Oh, wait. I think it's because I can see on other people's tokens as well. Oh, that makes sense. Allow me to fix that quickly then. I might have to resize my token so I can save it as well. Yeah, let's do that quick. Let's get bozos. Deleted! Put you back on here so you can't misbehave. Uh... Right, very quickly, let me do some fresh tokens on the token page. Do... Right, Murgatroyd, Armitage, Cesri, and Penelope. Resize Penelope. Perfect. Let's do that on the character sheet. In players journals, all edited and controlled by Anya. Oh. Just fixing stuff, love. Resave the token. You select a token. So that should be Murgatroyd fixed. Armitage funnel cake. Edit. Only controlled by Eludius Quinzel Esquire. Change that. Edit. You select a token. And Cesare. Yeah, I should have changed that earlier already. Uh, Hannah. Save. 
Edit, press the token. And Penelope. Edited by Triff Star. Move. Select token. I've done your vision and everything, Penelope. Yes, I have. All right, let's give this another go. Let me refresh the old dynamic lighting. There we go. That's a nice reset button. Alright, I will drag you out again just because you won't be able to see where you are to start with. Armitage, Murgatroyd. Oh, on the wrong page? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, okay. Sorry. No right. And accessory. Let me transfer you. Oh. Hup. Take two. Much better. Yeah. There we go. Perfecto. Right. Grab notes. That's Penelope who sends the stairs. She's just like, the barrels had an odorous stench about them, but one could not help but feel that. I would rather be partaking in a nice drink of ale than being in the basement of such a stenchy fishery. So, in front of you, uh, you've got stone pillars holding up the fishery overhead, thick stone pillars, um, and between them you've got barrels filled with salted fish. Two of the barrels have been smashed open, spilling their contents on the floor, not best represented by the map, but I'll say it's these two barrels at the back. Um, in the east wall is a large hole opening into darkness. Uh... I'm going to use my that's audibility. Oh, yep. Yeah. So I was going to say we'll start going around and see what people want to do in exploration mode. When you enter a new location, such as a room or corridor, you immediately notice one thing out of the ordinary. GM determines what it is or whether there's nothing reasonable to pick up, skipping obvious clues that can be easily noticed without a check or specific looking for them. You learn only that an area or object is suspicious, but not why it's suspicious. For example, if you entered a study with a large bloodstain on the ground, the bloodstain is so obviously suspicious that it would be already evident to you. So the GM might know there's something suspicious about the desk drawer instead. Interesting. I would say you notice a little glimmer of... Um, blue green like a teal color very small coming from beneath the benches at the back of the room over here just caught a little flash of light oh she'll move over there and um start sort of saying that um she'll sort of say yeah i noticed a blue green damn flash from the back of the room <laughs> armitage um Cesare, there is something over mm -hmm. here okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use my pursuer lead. Oh. Spend Let's one minute thing. examining the details of one potential clue, designating the subject related to that clue as the target of your active investigation. Very cool. Um, this is funny. Whenever you attempt a perception or skill check to investigate a designated subject, you get a plus one circumstance bonus to the check. Oh, nice. The exact check supplies to be to take to investigation. That's so cool. So, uh, Penelope, as you investigate this little glimmering blue flash, you can see very clearly um, it's about the size of like a thumbnail, um, but um, with a rougher texture and this lovely blue um, glimmering color to it. Um, do me a. Um, we'll call this a nature check, please. Nature. 
Oh, and you'd get an extra plus one to this. So that becomes five. Cool. Even with a, a, a poor roll, um, a five is enough to understand simply that this looks to be a scale of some kind. Doesn't look like a fish scale either. Something larger and perhaps more of the reptilian variety. Yeah, mm -hmm. she she would sort of record that into a crystal and then um, sort of look up at the rest of them like, um, yes, I do believe it is some kind of scale. Not of the fish variety mm -hmm. either. Something larger and more menacing. Not a big fish. Perhaps. <laughs> Reptilian, perhaps. Reptilian uh... fish. <laughs> Whatever it is, it is... Uh... Quite the, quite the mystery. Hmm. Can I see the scale? Yeah, she'd hand it over. If you, yeah, if you want to make your own nature check, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Tom, yeah. I feel like Murgatroyd would have a lot of experience with the natural world because obviously she's making yeah kind of options and stuff. Would can I do some kind of check to yeah Na nature check from you as well. I yeah, will use uh, clue in on Anya. <laughs> you share information. So cool. <laughs> share information. They gain a second equal to yours. From okay. okay. Very cool. So you both get twenty-five thanks to um, Penelope's clue in. Incredible. So during your discussion um, and you're kind of gathering around and inspecting, I don't know what Armitage thinks of all this, but. Both of you, with your background um, in healing and using all sorts of different natural ingredients to bring about certain effects. Um, with a 25 from both of you, I would say you recognize this to be the scale of a small humanoid reptilian creature, a kobold. Mm, okay. Uh, looks familiar. I think I've seen kobolds with similar scales. Um, maybe dealing with someone intelligent doing this. Kobolds are intelligent in Pathfinder, right? Yes, yeah, certainly, yeah, sapient, intelligent uh, mm. beings, yeah. Quite. Armitage oh, wants to try and recall what he knows about Kobolds with his dubious knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> can you uh, hit the dubious knowledge thing so I can see it in chat just to make sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is. Not all of it comes from reputable sources. A recall knowledge check using any skill. He learned a bit of truth. A bit of... <laughs> okay, this is actually quite a nice opportunity for me to introduce something that, that is um, uh, new to Pathfinder. Many checks made in... Well, not many. Some checks made in Pathfinder are done by the DM instead of the player. They're done as secret rolls. The reason for this, it's never fun taking away the rolling dice, we like rolling dice, but the reason for this is that oftentimes if we roll a check, for example Natalie's roll of a four, we can see the number and know that we didn't do well, and that then influences how we treat the information coming to us. I like that. Whereas if, as the DM, I roll and I know, I can then feed back to you, and you as the player don't have extra knowledge that your character wouldn't have. Because your mm. character doesn't know that you rolled low or what have you. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense. So if I wanted yeah. to burrow, I wouldn't be able to tell how well it went. <laughs> the burrow I'd let you roll yourself. <laughs> um, ah, so let me see. Armitage, I will roll your check for you. Which skill are you using? Uh, I... Nature or... Do you think another one is relevant? Here? Society? Oh, I love it. Society. Yeah, let me check the dubious knowledge. Okay. Um, are you laughing? With, <laughs> with, with dubious knowledge in mind, the brackets say, but don't critically fail. Um, you, you think that... Um, kobolds can be called over to you um, using a special whistle. You have to start with a very low whistle and then go very high, um, and that will bring all kobolds in the area to you immediately. Oh, my sister, she's like, you want the kobolds to come now? Uh, <clears throat> now? I mean, we don't know how many there are. Maybe not a good idea if they all come at once. 
Yeah, you are. Oh, uh, the cat person oh. made an interesting point. We do not wish to be oh. surrounded by such devilish little creatures. Oh, uh, I'll wait then. Anyway, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I nervously moved to the other side of the room just to make sure the large orc did not whistle um, at an inopportune moment and got my got me killed in the process. Armitage looks at the barrel and then he like hits it, not hits, but like knocks it with his wand, which is his great axe. Um, yep. Is he, is he trying to, to figure anything out or just knocking it? He's knocking it. He's like, hello? You're in there, cobbled. <laughs> Another fish flops out of the barrel, but nothing, no voice comes back to you. He picks it up, and he's like, No, you're not cobbled. And <laughs> like, drops it on the floor. <laughs> um, <clears throat> can Cesare look for, like, footprints, and how many there are, if there yeah, are any? Absolutely, if you want to do a survival check for me, happy with this to be you rolling. Survival... What's up? Hey. Okay. Um, you don't see any footprints as such. You do very clearly see, however, that the the stones around the entrance of the hole um, tell a tale of something either bursting or digging or burrowing through from the other side <laughs> into the room. Um, it's that way of entry rather than the other way round. Is there anything Murgatroyd would be doing mm. in this room as she goes around? She's probably just looking to see kind of what what there is, I guess. I realise that sounds really dense. No, not at all. So you've got the barrels here full of fish, a couple of them smashed. Along the back walls is a series of shelves where underneath Penelope found a, a scale. Um, and they're lined with different... Um, tools and goods that the fishery would use large sacks of salt um tool small knives for gutting fish and so mm -hmm. on stacked high apart from that it's quite a bare room except for the the hole in the eastern wall can i have battersea try and sniff out any anything of any importance i, I guess you'd be able to like you'd know about herbs and stuff I absolutely and love that. animals i'm gonna make a secret check for him Secret tunnel. You see Battersea's um, fur kind of stand up and he shudders all th along the length of his, his body as he sniffs around um, the barrels. There's You have a deep connection uh, with your familiar Battersea and you sense certain emotions coming from him. Um, there's there's a whole mixture of things. There's a, an emotion of excitement, which you felt with him before if he's like chasing prey. Um, in the fields around Sea Spray, but you also feel a little shudder of trepidation and fear of something bit much bigger than him. Um, certainly, you think the kind of fear that Bathsy wouldn't show when faced by a kobold. Okay. Anything else anyone wishes to do? Are you pressing on in, into into the gap? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I, actually, can I? Can we listen out and see if we can hear anything coming from down here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will do some. Actually, this is fine to do as open rolls. If anyone who wants to can do a perception check for me, please. Why does perception come under? It is in a different place. It's not in your normal skills. Um, it's on the side. Do I click the perceive button? Uh, it should be. I think it's on the right. It yeah, it's on the right down the character sheet. Yeah, try clicking perceive. Oh, yeah. one. I got 24. Jesus. Oh, very nice. Some very strong rolls. Um, not so much from. I guess he's not trained in perception. Oh, ev should everyone should be at least trained in perception. That might be something I missed out doing on the character sheets. Let me go through quickly and make sure everyone's. Oh, yeah, it. it's four. Nice. Okay. I can only see mine and Anya's rolls, by the way. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Oh, um, no, now I can. No, no, I can see Armitage. Um, but Cesri's rolls are rolling to me, to the, the GM. 
Uh, not sure why. Let me have a quick look at your character sheet. I'm going to quickly make sure Murgatroyd's perception is correct, which it is. It's probably an options, I would have thought. Yeah, let's have a quick look. This uh, is the kind of shit that it's good to figure out. Well, I can't see anything about... Sheet layout, skills... Oh yeah, if you don't want your thing always rolling critical damage, change auto-roll critical damage. It's up to you. Where's that? It's on the right. Oh, yeah. It still rolls your normal damage, it's just, I don't know, sometimes it's nice to press the button for when you get a critical. Uh, where to is this? Oh, there. Right. Options. Yeah, and options on the top right. Yeah, I wonder where that's coming from, Hannah. Uh... Maybe it's maybe it's in my setting on roll, right? Maybe. No, I'll have a little. Hold yeah, have, have a little play around. Um, oh yeah, your perception needs to be to trained as well. So set to your wisdom because your perception should be really fucking high. Yeah, six. So you rolled a natural nineteen, so you would have got twenty-five. So Cesare is actually the first to hear Penelope uh, not long after. There are distant sounds of dripping water and things moving um, further in, a small breeze gusting through um, stone tunnels, but largely silent. However, you do hear coming from um, right in front of you um, a skittering sound as three mm. large rats, very large giant rats, emerge from the walls, small burrows that had been hidden in the shadows behind the corners of the tunnel emerge in front of you. Um, and we are going to roll our very first Pathfinder initiative. God, I can't that. find it in my normal settings, so I don't know. Super weird. I'll have a little Google and an investigate. Um, before we start the combat, Murgatroyd, would you have been anywhere else or are you happy with where your token is? Cool, cool. That is fine. I'm going to open the turn order. So, yes, initiative is different in um, Pathfinder. For standard fights, you roll your perception as initiative. On your character sheet next to um, your perception button, you should see a little initiative button. Yeah. Very nice. Awesome. Yeah, you did do anything. You're on the turn order. Um... Different situations in Pathfinder can call for you to roll a different skill using initiative. It's a good opportunity for your character to gain an advantage going into combat um, using a skill that they're very good at. Typically, you know, if you're a rogue, you might be stealthing and then you use your stealth roll as your initiative. Um, but equally, if you're in like a crowded city and the fight breaks out, your society could be used as initiative and there's lots of different ways you could do or out in the wilds, your nature or survival could be used as initiative. It's quite a cool way of rewarding people for um, having different skill sets. Armitage, Murgatroyd, Penelope, I just need Cesri's initiative please. Oh, maybe it doesn't roll to it because it's sending it to me. That's annoying. I'll just put you on uh, manually. Add turn Cesri. Descending. I... Oh. Excuse me, Armitage. Landing on a rat. That would have emerged just down. Oh, I'm ready for Pathfinder combat. Okay, let me get some battle music on. Please do adjust your volumes as needed. Okay, we begin with some combat and encounter in Pathfinder. So, I will read you what the beginner's box says. Blah, 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 blah. Each player takes turns. No, 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 no. Strike action. We're all used to that. Oh, okay. It doesn't actually have that much. So, um,. Your character sheet has different actions. If you're a spellcaster, if you go to your spells tab on your character sheet, each of your spells will tell you how many actions it costs and whether it has certain other requirements. None of you are particularly overburdened with, with items, so I know you will have free... Actually, I read up about this in Pathfinder. Um, you don't need free hands to do somatic components, which is quite a nice change. Oh, that's a bit loud. 
Mm -hmm. um, but if a spell has material components, you do need a free hand to access either your arcane focus or your material components to get it. Um, though I don't really think any of you are using material component spells. Um, but if you have particular ideas about what your character might want to do in combat, um, other than just move and hit stuff, please do ask. There's lots of different um, actions that you can take. Um, some common non-attack skill ones are um, the demoralize action. It costs you one action. And you roll an intimidation check, and if you beat um, a certain DC for the creature, um, they gain the frightened condition, or um, potentially more than that. Which is a good opportunity for me to um, say that in Pathfinder, you don't just have crits and hits and fails. There's what's called four degrees of success. So critically fail, uh, critically um, succeed, success, fail, and critical failure. A critical success um, is 10 above what you needed to pass the check or more. So you don't just crit on a nat 20. If you beat someone's uh, armor AC by 10, you critically hit them. Um, or if they fail your their saving throw by more than 10 or more against your spell DC, they would critically fail. Um, this will come into play more as we use different actions, and I'll explain it when it comes up. Um, for now, let's just play out a combat, try some things out, uh, and see how we do. Murgatroyd, is there anything you would like to do? So you have three actions to spend. Typically, um, often the first action is used to move. So you can take what's called the stride action. Costs one action of your three, and you move up to your speed, which is 25 feet. She's unmuting. I don't know. So you hear the sound of, of loud skittering rats from near yeah, where Armitage, Cesare, and Penelope, Penelope are by the, the hole in the wall? Well, she's not afraid of rats, so she's going to go... Fuck. Boop. 10, 15, 20, 25. Perfect. I assume Battersea would just be following her. I think week. so, yeah. I'll look up familiar stuff after the session, but yeah. Cool. Um... So, so you've got two it, actions left. You might want to cast a spell if you have any that could bolster your allies or um, take another I move action. I, I've taken another move action, so cool. that's that. Then I've got one left. Why was my first instinct? Yeah, get your intestines out and turn them into a lasso. <laughs> I would absolutely allow it if you want to do that. If you want to cast inside ropes with your last oh, action. No, I think that's a terrible idea. <laughs> okay. Um, you do so have some other different... one action cantrips like nudge fate and invoke true oh, name. I thought. Mm. What's up, love? No, I got all excited because I was like, I'm going to do ghost sound. Then I saw it said two actions. Yeah. yeah. You can take your movement back if you'd prefer to stay back and cast true nah. sound. Nah. going to do invoke true name. <laughs> this is the but movie. I don't know what its true name is. It's just. <laughs> Rat boys. Oh no, you do. This is why I actually really like that you took this spell. So as an old lady of sea spray, you recognize some of these rats. And you know that one of the rats down there's yep. true name is Jeremiah Giant Rat. Incredible. Um, Incredible. Please. He, he, he speak its true name. Um, and I don't think he makes a save. I think this just happens. Until the end of the current... Uh, oh, the first time... This turn, the tar Oh, sorry, love. This is useful. Um, you can completely keep it because it's cool flavor. Um, and we're all learning. So um, usually this only helps you on your current turn. So you'd use this as a cantrip to make it worse at saving against another spell you're going to cast that turn. Um, but we're all learning. So I'll say this just rolls over to your next turn. Cool. Very good. All right. Jeremiah. Is it Jeremiah? It is Jeremiah. Jeremiah, stunned at the use of his name, is going to move for his first action up to Armitage. And it's going to make a strike against you, Armitage. Uh oh, I hate rats! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking rats! Where are my creatures? Here they are. Giant rat. 
So with his first, uh, second action, he's going to make a melee strike with his jaws. Let's see what he rolls. He rolls a 12, which misses you, oh. Armitage. Coming off your armor. Will it make another attack? Don't think so. It's going to use its third action to actually move backwards, which again gives me a good opportunity to explain. Um, in Pathfinder, attacks opportunity aren't automatic. Um, you have to take a feat to be able to use attacks of opportunity. Fighters get it automatically. Not all enemies have it at all. The movement in Pathfinder is a lot more free. You don't get locked in next to a creature to avoid attacks of opportunity. Um, so it's very common to like move, attack, move back as a way of positioning yourself. Armitage, your turn. Armitage, kind of grips his wand out. He's like, "You're gonna die, big wet." And he moves forwards. <laughs> very cool. Um, he's gonna he's gonna use his spell strike. Amazing. Uh, and he's gonna do it with uh, uh produce flame. So it's going to add that. So he makes a attack roll, right? Yep, um, he makes an attack roll with his axe. Oh, that definitely hits. Um, that might even crit. Let me check their AC. Oh, you uh, didn't crit by one. Oh, shit. Um, um, and then he adds the... Yep, God, so essentially the spell goes off automatically, I believe. Yeah. Produce flame. One mm -mm -mm -mm. d4. No wait, yeah, one d4 fire damage on top of that. Plus his spell casting is that intelligence for mages. Intelligence, yeah. So it's actually two. Hey, wait. So two total or one plus two? One plus one. Ooh, you deal a grievous strike against this rat. The great axe hammering down and then a burst of flame around the blade as the magic is channeled through your wand into the metal blade. Almost he's just, killing the rat instantly. As the fire goes off, he's like, I'm done with you! <laughs> and yeah, that's the end of his turn. <laughs> Very nice. Another giant rat moves up to help its friend. So move action or stride action. It's going to make an attack. Giant rat sheet. His jaws. 13 to hit you. Misses again, I believe. Yeah. And it is going to, much like its cowardly friend, scurry back away. That's its full turn. And then one more rat. i run up. Make its attack. <laughs> Sister, they're rolling really bad against you, Armitage. <laughs> Clearly a feared by your impressive hulking physique. And run back away again. These rats are fearful of these great creatures that are assaulting them. Penelope Patterson, it is your turn. Oh God, there's so much to do. I'm going to start off with devising a stratagem. Very cool. Against... So you choose a creature. Which so creature would you like to choose? I'll pick the one in front of Armitage. Very nice. A little mark. Um, so I've rolled a d20. Yep. Pretty but good. you know your roll is going to be a 17 if you strike that creature. Cool. In that case, then, I will... That was one action. Um, I can use my intelligence modifier to attack roll instead of my strength or dex. Mm -hmm. Provided the strikes use an agile or finesse melee weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, an agile or fine, uh, a ranged weapon. Or a sap. Um, I guess I'll run up and use my sap. So that oh. costs another action, right, to move. To move, yep. That's can your I, second action. Can I step into Armitage's space in Pathfinder or not? Oh, uh, you can't split movement with attack, so no, I don't think so. Okay. That's a difference I hadn't thought of. So yeah, it might put you in a disadvantageous position. So I you can't can always really run throw out something then. if you had a dagger. Yeah, I got my blowgun. Oh, 
don't know how good it's gonna be. This, so this. I will be... say this rat looks very weak. Whatever damage you can do. So I think blowgun would be with dex, right? Because it's a ranged weapon. Dex to hit, still. Um, so so be... ranged weapons are different in Pathfinder. Um, they don't, unless they have a special thing which says propulsive. I think they don't have a modifier to the damage. Um, mm -hmm. It's but they do use dex to hit. Yeah. But th this would be my intelligence instead because of the divisor stratagem. Your attack roll. Oh yes, of course. Um... Oh, a critical hit. Well, that would it be though? Because I use a seventeen, right? Oh, you're right. Uh, what's just... your modifier with intelligence? It'd be plus four. Uh, and your proficiency, which is three, so seven, twenty-four. Oh, just like Armitage, you'd be one off critically hitting. Um, but even with the one damage, the blowgun shoots out and slays this rat dead upon the ground. So I've got one action left, right? Absolutely. So... He's quickly reading. Uh, I have to be a melee range to it. Um, hmm. Sorry, I'm just reading. It's alright. Reset the battle music. It's okay. Oh, There's so many stuff to remember. <laughs> it's alright, we're all 100% getting used to it. Um, hmm. Where was it? Hmm. So, to everyone else, Penelope has like sized up her prey, measured it out in her mind, and then deftly used this blowgun to shoot a dart straight into this rat and killed it. Where was oh. it? Uh, hmm. <laughs> Apologies, I know. I'm taking ages. Nope, we're all learning. Was it something you had in mind that you wanted to do? I was just looking at the list of actions on this thing. Let's see if there's any things mm -hmm. that make sense. Um. Hmm. It's not really anything I can take cover by, is there? Um, you could take cover because you're next to a corner, so that would increase hmm. your level, um, your or your uh, amount of cover, um, uh, from any opponents that's relevant for. So instead of um, light cover, you'd have heavy cover, which is plus four to your AC. Okay. How do I prepare to help? Um, you yeah. can ready. Or prepare. I can can't remember which way around it is an action. Um, oh, that would where you two actions, kinda... though, right? It does, yeah. I can't do that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take cover then. Very cool. So you sort of place yourself flat against oh. the wall after firing with the blowgun. Hannah. Huh? What? I th sorry, I thought you said was saying something. I think it's cute. Oh. Oh. Oh, I accidentally uh, closed my groin in my zip. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I nicked oh, it. Goodness, Kieran. No it, mid session wanking. God it damn. wasn't. It wasn't. Um, just. We should go back to Hulk again, Kieran. We <laughs> talked about this. It's <laughs> just so plucky. Um, amazing. Uh, Cesri, your turn. Um. Did that rat die? So, uh... It did. It's very dead. I can't see it being dead. Oh, definitely that dead. one. Oh. Says so he I'll, just brushes back I'll far be honest, on ahead. I, I couldn't actually see that one, Tom, so I was actually aiming for this one. Oh, is there that. one in that spot for you? Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. Let me 
me move their counters around. Has it oh, it's over there. Okay. Yeah, the three rats, giant rats, are much further down there. See, I can only see like these two now. Ooh. So I think I probably would have shot that one. Okay, completely fair. Because I can't, yeah, I can't see the other one. That's so. taken. It's damage. Well, actually, maybe I wouldn't <laughs> have. Maybe I would have just moved to here to see that one because I could see Armitage is fighting one. Yeah. So I probably just wouldn't yeah. have taken cover, I would have moved. Completely fair. That makes more sense. It does. Cool, cool. It's Desri. It's Desri just, she's there. Uh, I don't really come to fight rats, but... Uh, she's just going to run in front of Armitage, mm -hmm. slick back her fur on her head, get down on all fours like a cat, uh -oh. and hiss at the rats. Oh, amazing! So she's doing uh, intimidation. Uh, a dem really... intimidation and demoralize. And you know yeah. what? Because it is cats against rats, and I love the description, I'm going to make this against all three of the rats. Because um, usually it's against one, but this is really cool. So yeah, um, roll an intimidation check for me, please. This is the demoralize action. 13 may well do it. It is against their will DC. So DCs are okay. a really common thing in Pathfinder, um, and it's basically whatever your normal modifier is for that thing. So like this will be their will save plus ten, and that's their DC. Okay. It's a very simple <clears throat> system that works really well. I just um, to try it. Oh, their will save is a three. So that's exactly what you needed to succeed in intimidation. So all three of them gain frightened one. So all their stats are down by one right now. As the rats shriek and back up from the terrifying cat lady that's come down here. Very, very cool. Where's the comp music going? Oh. Very nice. That's two actions done. Anything else from you, Cesare? Uh... Move again. You could attack. You've got all the options in the world. Just a bit, whether or not. I should have done the wild thing. Mm, nah. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Uh, what was that? What have I got left again? Just one action left because you moved. That's one action, yeah. and then you did intimidate. Oh, demoralize is what it's called. Okay. Um, I think I got much. Is that one? Is that one action? Did you meet? Do move, move, move. You could do move, 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 yeah. And it would be three times your speed. Yes. Right. Cool. Hold on. Um, that's one action, right? What does that do? Put it in the chat. Protect. It doesn't go in the chat. Hold on. Protect companion. Oh, it's because I put it into placeholder. Sorry, that's me being lazy. Right. I will, I will no, no, no. I, can, I can see it. I can see it. Oh, it's it's for it's for a summon basically. If you've summoned something, so if you oh, want to okay. if you want to change that cantrip, you can. Um, okay. Um. Okay. But now we will just do guidance. Then I don't know what that does. Oh, very nice. Guidance is really simple in Pathfinder. It's literally a plus one to your next thing. Cool. Granting the target a plus one status bonus to one attack roll, perception check, saving throw, or skill check they attempt before the duration ends. The duration is until the start of your next turn. Uh, and the oh. target chooses which bonus to use it on. However, after using it, the target is then immune to the spell for one hour. Just so you're aware. Who's who's oh. the spell on? Me. Oh, very nice. Yep, absolutely. Completely fair. So you've got a plus one to whichever roll you want to... Oh wait, hang on. It's until the start of your next turn. Oh. So you may uh, have to next. Else. Whoever's next is Murgatroyd. A little bit of guidance for old Murgy. Give you a little flag. <laughs> Very nice. Murgatroyd, your turn. I am gonna use my turn and I'm gonna cast a spell a thing. Very cool. Telekinetic projectile. Oh good choice. Uh, two actions, 30 feet. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. perfectly in range. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Just like a nearby rock or something in particular you're hurling with your mind? Yeah. Just yeah, nearby rock. Whatever's there. Unfortunately, with the attack roll, um, it does not hit. I will say, this is a good opportunity. Um, everyone, kind of like inspiration in D&D, uh, everyone has one hero point. You can stack up to three hero points, and just like inspiration, they allow you to re-roll one roll. You have to take the, the second roll, though. Um, I need to give them out as a DM. I'll give them out for the cool things happening. For example, I would give Cesare another one for that really cool intimidate um, use. I think you can track them on your character sheet. You can, top right. Oh, top right, your hero points. Um, and sometimes it's good to keep one because you can use them for uh, heroic recovery if you're down it will like bring you back to one health kind of thing um, but it costs all your hero points does it cost three or does it cost how many you have however many you have it uses them all okay interesting so it's, it's quite a good idea to kind of keep one in your back pocket yeah. but you're not really in any danger right now so if you wanted to re-roll that murgatroyd you could yeah. Rip. Yeah. Roll some dice. No. Oh. Oh, bullshit. Fuck's sake. Two plus. We rolled a three. You shouldn't be able to roll a five. Hold on. You still, still missed, missed, but I think your spell attack roll should be higher than that. Two, three. One d twenty. <laughs> I have an idea. That should have been seven. Does that mean... Oh, um, take your hero point back, Murgatroyd. Yeah. I will investigate what's going on with your character sheet, um, because that first one, you rolled a natural 11, which plus your spell attack roll of five would have been 16, which does hit. Oh. So you dealt seven damage to this creature. Cool. Ouch. Nice. I kind of want to try out Nudge Fate as my third action. Amazing. Can you put it in the chat? What does it do? Yeah, I don't really know. This is the thing. I don't know if it's appropriate in this uh, particular circumstance. One action, verbal, target one creature, sustained up to one minute. You read slightly into the future and give Fate a tiny push to achieve the result you desire. Once during the duration, when the target fails an attack roll, skill check, or saving throw, and a plus one would have made would have turned a critical failure into a failure or a failure into a success, you give them a plus one retroactively. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, oh, so this is one of your hexes. Amazing. Um, no, you absolutely can. So the way sustained works... Um, you don't really have concentration in Pathfinder. You have sustained, which basically means if you want to keep the spell going, that can keep going. Um, you have to spend one action on your each turn to keep it going. So it's like Witch Bolt. Like Witch Bolt. Yeah, very good. Um, amazing. Who are you casting Nudge Fate on? Who are you giving this little push into the, a better future? Cesri. Very cool. Let's choose a cool little thing. Let's go with the heart. Uh, amazing. Thank you, Murgatroyd. That is your full turn. Uh, giant Rat. The very heavily damaged one. And it's desperation. It is going to lunge wildly at you, Sensory. Oh. <clears throat> yep. With its jaws, it does have a minus one to this due to its frightened condition. Um, so a fourteen misses you, and at the end it of does. its turn, it loses its frightened one condition. Um, it's going to stay there though. It's going to make a second attack, and this will get a good opportunity to show the multiple attack penalty. If you attack multiple times on your turn, um, you. Uh, take a penalty to your second and potentially third roll when you attack. It's usually minus five to the first one, then minus ten to if you go for the, a third attack in one round. Um, mm -hmm. But if your um, weapon has that agile 
trait. It's only minus four, then minus eight. In general, it's not a great idea to attack lots of times on your turn unless your character's built for it. Um, rangers are very good at attacking multiple times on their turn. If you build them right. Oh, it did roll very well. However, it would still have frightened and you've got a great AC. So yeah, misses you. And just sits there, mm -hmm. horrified and ready to die. Armitage, Funnel Cake, your turn. What is a stance? Um, so a stance is something that you... I believe it's on your like arcane cascade as like a trait. Of That's it. exactly. But when does it end? Uh, let's see. Well, is it just like when you say it ends? I think so, yeah. And then otherwise it's just you can't have more than one stance on at once. Okay, he's so he's gonna arcane cascade, so he gets plus one fire damage. Very cool. And he's gonna move here. He's gonna bring his axe up. Mm. He's like, oh, 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 and um, <laughs> slam it down, um, doing his a thunderous strike, a uh, thunderous whatever the hell it is. Um, where is it? This your focus, uh, focus spell. Yeah, um, he uses that up. So and he's gonna do it so it hits all those rats because it's a fifteen foot cone. So I think it would nick. Are you seeing to choose where they are correctly? Yeah, because it's like that, right? Let's see. Very cool. Yeah. C cones uh, are slightly weird in part, but it's fine. Um, and I think it would hit them all anyway, even with the weirdness of Pathfinder cones. I love it. Fortitude saves. Yeah. Let's make three fortitude saves. So as you slam down your weapon, just this rumble of power shifts through the stone. And the one next to Cesri. Where's me fortitude save? There it is. One next to Cesri. Yeah. I think that also regenerates his um, lawyer, his um, spell strike. Oh, super cool! So he doesn't need an action to get it back up. Very, very cool. But obviously, he's only got one focus point, so he can only do that once. Take two sonic damage. And they're not prone if they the fail. First one rolled uh, a fourteen. What's your spell DC? <laughs> Possibly more than that. 14. Um, so they do save. Yep, yeah, so that first one doesn't take any damage. The other two both have minus one to this because of their frightened condition. They both fail, so they both take two sonic damage. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Is, is that the entirety of your turn? Well, that's everything, yeah, that's three actions. Very good. Giant right here. It's gonna go for Armitage. What does prone do in this? Just um, half speed? Or? You have, no, you have to spend an action to stand back up. Oh, so, oh right, so I had to use one to get up. Okay. Yeah, and you're you're automatically flat-footed while you're prone. Okay. Jaws attack. A nineteen. Well hit. That hits. Yeah. Seven damage as cool. his jaws sink in. Finally, I've hit something. Um, and yeah, fuck it. We'll go for a second attack. With its map modifier. Only a 12. Yeah, it misses. It is now stuck there. And... Brings me to the last one. They're trying to gang up on you. Armitage. Lunges in with its jaws. A 26 to hit! Yeah, it's... It almost it's not... crits you! Almost. Um, oh yeah, and this, they lose their frightened condition now. Fine, I'll do that in a sec. So, a further 6 piercing damage, I'm afraid. And, buoyed by its success, it's going to try and bite you again. Oh god. Let's see if it can knock you down, but with a 14, it misses you entirely. For some nasty hits against you there, Armitage. Um, Penelope Patterson, is your turn. I'm going to devise a stratagem against mm -hmm. this one. 
So roll a d20. So you know that will be your roll. Seven. So sixteen. I think a sixteen will hit. So you I got can... a pretty good, pretty good feeling with that one, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna try and. I just realised I should have a crossbow. I had a crossbow bolts to my inventory, but not the actual crossbow. That's all good, yeah. Um, so let me quickly search that. And crossbow. Because that would probably be better than a blowgun. Mm hmm. Um, so, tax, crossbow, so I will shoot the one and use the 17. Very nice, hit. Or whatever it was, 16. Um, so one Which one was it? Yeah, it was the one in front of Armitage, the one just to the right. I also oh, yeah. forgot about last time. I mean, it died anyway, so it didn't matter. But um, oh, your um, my thingy, yeah, my your um, D six, your extra D six yeah, damage. Yeah, strike. go ahead and roll, roll that now. Oh, oh unlucky. Fuck my life. Right. Two damage, unfortunate. So a, that's a well played turn anyway. Two actions, and I will. I think I will move. Cool. Supporting oh. your companions. Can I get there? Yep, you can stand over the body. Just get rid of the rat now. Yeah, I want to get behind Armitage in case he goes. Well, actually, I think he'll probably heal him. Actually, I'm not going to move. That sounds stupid. <laughs> if he dies, then I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to stay there. Uh, anything else? You could try and demoralize one of the rats if you want, or um, move somewhere else. So was there cover originally? somewhere. Yep. I kind of just want to move here, to be honest. I know it's not very exciting, but I want a, more of a clear vision of all three of them. Yeah, makes perfect sense to me. Um, Very cool. Sensory, your turn. Um, So, I can't see anyone's health, so is Armitage looking at crap? Is he oh, looking at six, six out of 19. He's on six. Out of uh, how does heals work in this game? Have you got the spell heal? Yeah. Um, so the you you can choose to use one action for it, two actions, or three actions. Three actions makes it a very different spell. It becomes an AOE heal for a small amount, um, which wouldn't be great for you right now because everyone else is full health. Um, so basically you spend one or two actions. It still uses the same spell slot, whichever one you use. Two actions is more powerful, but costs you more actions. Okay. So I'm confused of why three actions makes it an AoE and not just more powerful. Um, that's just how the spell works. Um, so one action. Um, it has a range of uh, touch and does 1d8 healing. Two actions. It has a range of 30 feet. And you do 8 plus d8 healing. Really good. Um, mm -hmm. Three actions. It becomes a 30 foot aura or emanation, it's called in Pathfinder, from you. Um, and targets everyone to just to do the 1d8. Okay. So if I do two actions, how many eights is it? d8 plus 8. d8 plus 8. Freaky. Freaky. Pretty nice. And, yeah. one, and what was the one? Just the 1d8. Just one yeah. of the eight flat, yeah. Mm. I guess I'll just have to rely on anyone else killing them. Let's do two. Um, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. So if you don't know if the spell will let you do it, you could try clicking it, see if it works. But otherwise, just roll a d8 for me and we'll add eight to it. Let's click it. Did it do uh, it? Yeah, it didn't do it. Um, it. Just shows the saving throw. Because if you use uh, healing magic, Bunga would fucking love this. If you use healing magic against undead in Pathfinder, it just does the same thing, but damaging them instead of healing them. Nice. You fucking imagine Bungo's combos against 
<laughs> undead stuff. Yeah. I'm gonna channel 100 hit points into that undead. I just go Bleh. into that room and hold mountain <laughs> and be like, die! Time to die. Uh, so if you just roll a d8 for me, please, Hannah. No. And we'll add 8 to it. Oh, oh nice. There you go. Um, wave of energy heals you. Positive energy healing you, Armitage. Your wounds knit back together. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, and then I've got one more, right? Um, one more action. You could hit the thing next to you if you wanted. It's looking very weak. Yeah, I've got nothing to hit with. You can make an unarmed attack if you like. Or you can retroactively okay. give your character an item. I don't mind that. Uh, no, that, uh, Although yeah, I guess I think... the whole metal druid thing, a star. Yeah. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Bonk it on there. Nah. Uh, we will just. I assume she's got some little claws. Let's try and just do an unarmed strike on it. Yep. Sounds good. Should be an unarmed strike on your character sheet. Uh, let me have a look. Mm. Oh, I didn't give you the modifier. It's always annoying when it does that. Let me change that on the thing. So it does go off your strength, but you are trained. Everyone's trained in unarmed strikes. So it'll be a plus three. Um, unfortunately, though, that does miss. A low roll there. Unless you'd like to use a hero point to re-roll it. No, what is this heart on me? That is um, uh, Murgatroyd's nudge fate. So if, if a plus one would have made it hit, you would have gotten that effect, but it, it wouldn't. Uh... Oh, too low. Unfortunate. Cool. Murgatroyd, background to you. I'm going to use my first action to move down here. Very nice. I did already count it. Um, um, very good. I don't really know what to do. You want to punch it? Or, or use, you, if you, you want to retro, use your hatchet? hatchet? You could use your hatchet, hatchet to try and kill it? it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Nice. Click that hatchet. Yeah, but, uh, but I'm not sure how. Uh, yeah. It should be in your actions um, on, on your, your character, character tab, tab um, uh, down yeah, and left. Yeah. Melee yeah. strikes hatchet. Click yeah. the attack yeah. button. Plus, plus one. one. Or oh. number one. Just that one. Yes. Yeah. Though unfortunately you guys are rolling poop. Wait, why do you only have a plus, plus one? one. Mm. It's good that we're getting these teething issues. He clicked trained. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Plus four, oh. so that becomes 11. I'll put weapon proficiencies in. Still doesn't hit. I know, they're, they're nimble, they're dodging around. I will remind you, you, if you want to keep your spell sustained on Cesare, you have to spend an action to do that. But it's up to you, you could let it drop. It's only a cantrip. Spending the action? Yeah. So you continue to channel this nudging of fate into sensory. The one HP rat, which is lucky to be alive, is gonna attack Armitage, because he's the threat right now. Gonna make a Jaws attack against you, Armitage, for a 22. It's Dealing five damage. It will then lash out at Cesare for an 11. And then it's going to make its final attack at Murgatroyd at a minus 10 to this. It's already built into it, so yeah, an 8. Hence why multiple attacks are bad. Armitage, your turn. Armitage doesn't like these rats, so he's going to spell strike, but he's going to use a different spell this time. Going to use electric arc. Oh, it's a great cantrip. Oh. oh wait, it's a saving throw, so no, he's yeah. not. Um... You could just cast electric arc. It's a very good cantrip. Oh, hang on. I nearly picked him. Yeah, he is, and he's going to make it bounce over here. Nice. Right, he's right. Saving throws. Oh, dead now. Boom. And uh, yeah. <laughs> They do have a decent reflex save. Let's see how they do. 
Maximum rolls a 26. And the bottom right rolls an 18. Well. You know, it leaps from one target to another. Oh, it's a basic, though. So the way basic, whenever something says basic saving throw, it basically means um, if they succeed, they take half damage. If they critically succeed, they take uh, no damage. And if they f uh, critically fa if they fail, they take the normal damage and critically fail double damage. So one of them still takes plus your spellcasting modifiers. So that becomes six, Five. right? Five. Uh, so... Actually, oh, wait. Did critically succeed, so it takes no damage. This rat is living on borrowed time. I don't know if. Do. It's your intelligence modifier. This one, but I was trying to work out if that other thing adds to it because he's in that stance. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have a quick read. Mm -hmm. okay, no, it's just for his weapons. It's his weapon. Strikes. Yeah. Cool. So you deal some damage, the lightning jumps across, but with the rat above you, it just singes the end of its tail and it yelps and leaps to the side. Um, you do still have one action, if you'd like to just hit one. That's minus... Oh, yeah, it's not minus ten. Not yeah. Minus. yeah. It was just uh, attack a one-on-one. -on -one. Battle mage. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Come you on. Can't roll poop forever. Oh! Yeah, 22! 12 slashing damage! <laughs> she just yeah. turns into a puddle. <laughs> yep, you mince this rat into the floor. And I will delete its token. I'll leave the last one that you guys kill in case you want to uh, don't steal its corpse. Uh, that's your full turn, Armitage. We do now have the two rats that are left. They are going to... Oh, I can't flank you. Your friends have supported you. This one's going to move here. Do its first attack against Cesri. And second attack against Armitage. Um both hit. Um only two damage to you, Cesri. And four damage okay. to you, Armitage. <laughs> and the other rat is just gonna go crazy at Armitage. One, two, three. Oh my god! It actually only hit with its worst strike. It managed to roll very well. I love how, like, thou thundered you and Oh my god! Oh my god, mate! Um, five more damage to you, Armitage, I'm afraid. That is all their turns, though. It's back round to full round of you guys now. Penelope. I'm going to do something different this turn. Very cool. I'm going to move... Uh... Can I move like that to get there? Yeah, I think so. Um, that's my 25 feet. And then Very nice. I am going to do the faint action. Oh, yeah, the faint action's awesome. I am trained deception in deception roll. Yeah, I have to be trained in deception and within melee reach to attempt to faint, but I am trained in deception, so that's fine. Very cool. With a misleading flourish, you leave an opponent unprepared for your attack. Attempt a deception check against which one? Against, um, the one that I'm flanking with thingy. Very nice. So I will do deception. This creature now counts as flat-footed against the two of you. Minus two AC. What does it say? It's against. Um, against its perception DC. On a critical right. success, you throw your enemy's defenses against you entirely off the target's flat footed against melee attacks. Do you attempt against it at the end of your turn? Uh, does it do anything on a normal success? Your foe is fooled, but only momentarily. The target's flat footed against the next melee attack. Oh, you, attempt. you get that. You get a success. Okay, cool. You S juke it completely, and it le leaps to one side, and you sense an opening. And then I will swing with my. I'm going to do my sap because that's cooler than a short sword, and I think it does the same damage. Sap. 18 definitely hits. Fuck me, I keep running really bad on this damage die. Let's see. Hang on, it's flat footed. 13, yeah, not not a crit. Um, Yes, unfortunate. One damage. Uh, that's my turn. 
That's your turn. Very cool. Thank you for showcasing the different actions. Very much appreciated. Cesri. What is the music he's stopping? Is it not on loop? It should be on loop. I can't hear it. No. I put it in like a little playlist and it's not... Oh, playlists always break. Alright, I'll just put one of the tracks on. Okay. Uh, what are we doing? Cesri is going to do... So I changed the, um, I changed the cantrip. Oh, very nice. Gouging Claw. Ooh, that sounds cool. Basically similar to the cantrip in D&D, where you um, grow teeth and claws. Oh, yep. Very nice. So I'm going to do that. It's two actions, annoyingly. Yep. Uh, tried to add it so that I could just press it, but it didn't work. Damn it. Okay. Um, spell attack plus four. Then it's a d6 plus one, I think. Cool, cool. It is flat footed because Penelope's flanking it. Oh, that definitely hits. Nice. Wait, plus four? Plus four. That's a crit. Oh. That's a 23 against an AC currently of 13. Yeah, that's a crit. Roll critical. Uh, the way critical damage roll uh, works in um, Pathfinder is really simple. You just roll your normal damage and double everything. Uh, okay. Gets doubled as well. So roll your d6 plus one, and then we double whatever you roll. Five, double to Ooh. ten. Jesus. Oh. Yeah, you absolutely eviscerate this rat. Into nothingness. Red splotches on the walls. No. Um, I guess I'll just move up. Mm-hmm. Is it? Very cool. Oh, yeah, that is it. You're right. Thank you. Um, Murgatroyd. Murgatroyd! Three actions, Murgatroyd. What are they going to be? Um... I don't know. I'm going to try and... Well... I'm going to move round. Mm -hmm. Scooch past Armitage. Very nice. I'm going to hit it. Oh, with a hatchet. Yeah. It is flat footed because it's being flanked. Did I roll it wrong the last time? I don't think so. You did your hatchet, right? Yeah. Yeah, you were fine. 16. 16 hits. 5 damage. Describe to me how the little oh, elderly Murgatroyd gnomish form kills this giant rat. I feel like her somewhat blunt hatchet would sort of like just smack into the into it, the middle of its back, and its like little tiny eyes would just bulge, and it'd be like <laughs> <laughs> incredible. And then it lies down dead. Very nice. Boosh. As the last rat dies and the adrenaline of battle wanes, you find yourself stood covered in all manner of blood. Armitage looking pretty worse for wear and Cesri with a few battle scars on her. Um, just for the sake of um, a little last little bit of um, seeing how Pathfinder works, we will do a little bit of um, post-encounter... Um, it's not proper downtime, but essentially what you do instead of your normal D&D style short rest or what have you. Are you sure you want to clear the turns list? Yes, I am. Never asked me that before. Um, so, people who've used focus spells like Armitage might want to spend the next 10 minutes refocusing to get their focus point back. Mm -hmm. um, other people might want to spend that 10 minutes ex like exploring or investigating the nearby... Um, uh, room obviously it's not a good a good idea to wander off too far and separate the party um, but those with a medicine skill may want to instead spend their time uh, 10 minutes it takes to do treat wounds treat wounds is a really important um, thing in pathfinder let me get it up so i can read it properly for you can i use my plaster uh <laughs> yes absolutely you can <laughs> can it takes you 10 minutes treating one injured living creature, um, including yourself if you wish. The target, and this is the the, the balancing 
part of it for it. The target can then not be treated by you for one hour. So you can't just do 10 minutes over and over again. You'd have to wait more time than the, obviously the DM can do sneaky stuff with that. Um, mm -hmm. The medicine check DC is usually 15. The GM might adjust it based on the circumstances. Here, it absolutely would just be 15. Um, if you're an expert in medicine, which none of you are, you're too low level, you can do extra stuff. But it's got a very simple thing. If you succeed, the target regains 2d8 hit points. You roll it. Critical success, the target regains 4d8. Um, critical failure, the target takes 1d8. Failure, nothing happens. But they still become mm -hmm. immune for to you to your treat wounds for an hour it's quite a nice elegant little system so anyone trained in medicine um usually you need healers tools but i'll just say you guys have some healers tools with you um and i know wow. hannah you don't need healers tools because you've got your yeah. turn dirt into <laughs> rub dirt in it make it better yeah. um, system <laughs> so if you'd like to go first if you want to try and treat armitage or yourself um, can you only do it one, one, one time? Can you do it once? No, that's the great part about it. Um, eat the the immune thing for for an hour is completely individual. So you could spend ten minutes treating yourself, spend ten minutes treating Armitage afterwards, and so on and so on. Obviously, it racks up time. So if if it's time sensitive, you may want to be clever about who treats who. Um, but no, mm -hmm. you can do it multiple times, just not. Against so is it? So is it? Sorry. So is it ten minutes? Per medicine check, or is it 10 minutes mm -hmm. just because I'm using my plaster? 10 minutes per medicine mm -hmm. check. The plaster okay. allows you to use your nature skin instead of medicine. Right. And, me okay. and means you don't need to spend money or or anything on healer's tools. Okay. Um, I mean, medicine or nature, they're both pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I guess yeah. I'll, I'll do... I'll do armitage. Can I do can I do armitage at the same time as while he's doing his focus thing? Yes. Or you does can. that have to be separate? Yeah. Okay. He's oh, concentrating what? on his refocusing, you're concentrating on patching his wounds up. Okay. So while he's focusing hopefully Sixteen succeeds. 16. Roll two D eight. Nine HP oh, yeah. back to Armitage. And if anybody else was, um, so that's Cesri and Armitage for this first 10, or I'm assuming, Kieran. Does yeah, yeah, he is. He's focus. really fake. Yeah. yeah. So you can add your focus point back. Penelope and Murgatroyd, what would your two characters have been doing in that 10 minutes? If you also, he Armitage is only immune to uh, treat wounds from Cesri uh, for an hour, so you could also have been healing Armitage at the same time. Might do that. I was just trying to look what other what investigation I could do, but mm -hmm. I don't really know if there's anything right now that makes much sense. Oh, and actually, I'm reading this again. I am wrong. Um, Armitage is immune to treat wounds from anyone for an hour. Oh. Okay. But some, someone could have treated Cesri in this time if they wanted to. It's up to you guys. Murgatroyd's going to treat Cesri. Very cool. I love that. If you can roll a medicine check for me, please. Um, it's just like, you yeah, rub the dirt in it makes you better. <laughs> it usually does. Well, you got some good <laughs> skills there. Yeah. Very Thanks. nice. Roll 2d8 for me, please, Murgatroyd. I think even if you roll double one, Cesare's back to, to full health. Yeah, there's a nice little chain of healing going on. As you're patching up Armitage, Murgatroyd fusses over you. Sorry? Healing circle, says Anya. Um, so yeah, very final thing of the session before we stop. Is there anything Penelope would have liked to have done? Um, you could roll a, a, a check of some kind if you want to see if you I was spotted gonna, anything. I was going to try and scout. Very cool. scout ahead behind, and behind the route to watch danger, maybe at half. Speed. I love that. Start of the next encounter. Every creature you fight against a plus one circumstance bonus to initiative rolls. Perfect. I will absolutely count that for the next encounter. Let's make a little note myself on the screen. After killing the rats, Armitage would also be like, "Yeah, job done. Kill the rats. Trying to get a ten gold." <laughs> <laughs> I like Armitage.
<laughs> He's kind of cute. He is so cute. I want an Armitage plushie. <laughs> now that he's scouting. Cool. I've made a little note as well. Amazing. We'll call it there, guys. Thank you so much. You have completely okay. enabled my addiction in TTRPGs, taking the next step down. Um, mm. 